All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Hey, Mark. Good, good. Got like 47 people in here. We are 13 minutes past schedule, but uh, we can run it over by 13 minutes also. That's fine. Um, we are going to discuss divergence today. We're going to do a recap of uh, uh, all the divergence postings that we have done um, since the previous um, session going into uh, the upcoming. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, just give me a moment while this loads up here. All right. Um, yeah, and uh, how are you guys liking the apps? Are you guys, uh, do you guys like the apps that we've put up on Android and, uh, whoa, let me just restart this, I think. Okay, yeah, so for just one request for those of you who download the apps, please, please help us rate the apps. Um, and those of you who have already rated the apps, thank you so much. Um, is the audio clear? Do you guys want me to make the microphone louder or softer? Louder, please. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we have the divergence one um, up and running. Let me see where, here we go. If you just click on the divergence, I'm oh, sorry, that's the supply and demand group. If you click on the divergence group, you'll see um, uh, all the information in there on how you can get, get it on your uh, mobile app. So we're gonna go through um, some of the stuff that we had discussed. Now let's begin here. All right, uh, US dollar CAD, four hours on July 16th, okay? I'm gonna go through some of these postings and the ones prior to this. Um, Sunshine, if you are in the room, uh, again, we thank you for all your work that you've given us. Sunshine is um, interning with us with the divergence part, and she's doing, doing a superb job, so. Um, let's take a look here. So, what do we have? Okay, on US dollar CAD, on the four hour chart, she spotted this divergence, okay? Let's look into it. Where is my US dollar CAD, there we go. Four hour charts. Let's bring in divergence. Okay. Okay, so she, she spotted this change here. She's taking from this area to this area and using the same thing from here to here. Okay. Now, when you see, when, when you see something like this, how many of you guys actually took this trade or were able to use this in your trading system or strategy? I see there's a lot of comments um, on that post. Okay, Sunshine, you took it. Okay, how did that end up going? Okay, what I want you guys to do is, uh, as you guys follow this divergence thing, of course, there's going to be postings by um, uh, Sunshine herself and many others who would like to participate in this. Um, what I want you guys to experience is how exactly it turns. Does it turn the moment it shows it, or does it turn a bit later? Okay. Sunshine, you're still running at 38 pips. Okay, good, good. Okay, uh, Ronald, I sell early today. Okay. Okay. So this trade pretty much uh, worked out. Now let's take a look at some of the other postings. Okay, um, the other postings were a little bit older before this group was made, so let's uh, um, get those. They're in the forums.
Okay. What do we have since our last webinar? Okay. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. We had a daily divergence. Let's take a look here. Okay, on New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. We had this miniature divergence that we saw that was forming up, okay? Um, we want to call this opposites for the sake of any of um, those who are new. For um, anyone new in here that does not know divergence or how it works, anybody need a recap or anything? Or I can simply give you the link if you guys want it. You guys can review it on your own time. Okay, um, Ankush? Okay, let me do this. Let me just give you guys the link in case anyone is new. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm posting it in the room. Okay, if you go through this page, there's a video there. That was our previous webinar. Um, also, those of you who are watching probably this video on YouTube, if you have your annotations turned on towards the end of the videos, you will see a, um, uh, a link that takes you to our previous videos, the, uh, the basics and stuff like that. Okay, so um, going back to uh, the other one that we had, we got New Zealand dollar Japanese yen on the daily side. Let's take a look at that one. What do we have on New Zealand dollar Japanese yen? Okay. New Zealand Yen daily charts. Okay. Okay. We had this formation going on. Now, how do you look at this? How do you look at it? And we had obviously we saw opposites going on, and while from this area the markets kept going higher and higher and higher, while your indicator not it's not the same thing it kept going lower lower and lower you know when we draw our horizontal trend line we see price breaks that okay if we draw a horizontal trend line from where it started here on the indicator it never breaks it so when was the moment that it actually broke it's right here this is when people started to first see divergence taking place. Okay, They look at this, they move forward into the next day. A red candle appears, everybody sells. Okay, It continues to go north, it has to take them out. From the moment you actually first start to spot it, it took four days, four business days before it actually turned. Okay, For those of you who trade supply and demand, this is your supply area. Okay, we also have a group for this. Now, you can see how strong this is. You know, when you have a supply area up here, you're looking for a sell area here, and you get a confluence saying that, hey, my divergence occurred right over here, but of course, we can't sell right now. This is where everyone is selling. We need them to get taken out first. Okay, this is the 80% selling right here. Let them sell. As it goes north, it takes them all out. It also uses the supply level and boom, it drops. Okay, so it was a nice conjunction, but just looking at divergence, you need to understand that divergence by itself, okay, it, uh, it's a great tool to understand that the markets are going to reverse, but never look at it that the moment you see it, it's going to reverse then. It's not like that. It's not like that. Okay. Let's take a look at some more of the postings that were done. Okay, so New Zealand Japanese Yen worked out just fine. Let's take a look at uh, some of the other ones by Sunshine. Okay, we had gold divergence on 4-hour. Let's take a look at that one. Let me open up my chart to gold. All right, here we go. Gold diversions. This is four hours. Okay. Let's see what we got. Uh, 
Okay, Hassan's uh, question is, so how to take a trade on divergence? Okay, we'll, we'll go over that. We'll go over that. Okay, so on gold, uh, Sunshine had indicated that we have this area of opposites around 1,1284.95. Uh, okay, price was at 1,284.95. Where is that? On what day? 1284.95. Okay, it's in that range. Is it is it my charts that are different? Okay, this is around 11th of July. Okay. Indicators going downwards, prices rising upwards. Now I'm gonna do the horizontal thing to show you guys where it actually first broke and where people started selling, okay? All right, let's take a look. This is around 11th of July. Okay, right around here. Okay, this is what you had drawn right here, and this is what was happening right around here. So what happened? The moment she took this image, at that very moment, was it true that there was a divergence or that there was opposite? Okay, it's true, right? We all see that at that moment when, when she had taken the image, it still said, yes, this is the area where we're expecting the markets to reverse. But did it reverse over there? Okay. So this is what you guys need to understand that when you backtest all of this stuff, it looks really pretty and rosy because now when I look at this with all the information, I would never draw my line like that. I would draw my line like this. But that's not the reality. You know, most mentors, gurus tell you that, look, this is how it works. But that's not the case. In real markets, you will end up seeing stuff like this. Anything even like this. You'll be like, well, there is an opposite right there, and people will start selling, obviously. They will start selling. They'll be like, well, there's an opposite. Price is going to turn. And that's when the selling begins. When the reality is when the selling begins, a strong pressure comes in to take out all those sellers first. Okay? Market moves further north where it sells later. Okay? So you'd have to combine this into your trading system or your trading strategy no matter what you're trading it's okay you can add this into your trading style and it, it can be a good uh, assistance okay uh, okay sir it happened to me last night with AJ and J and uh, GA and GN okay yeah yeah it's it's uh, it, it's always like this the experience that people have when they do this with reality scares them they, they make a loss and then end up quitting from uh, divergence, but it's actually a very good uh, resource, okay? Can you check a bigger time frame? Of course, of course. Let's go on to the, let me, let me draw this area once again. Okay, and let's go to the next time frame. Okay, there's no, nothing here. It's, it's in an uptrend. And so is this is in an uptrend as well. Sorry, right here. And so is your indicator. So there's nothing on the higher higher time frame. Okay. Um, Eagle, is there a general rule when to enter? Well, if you actually if you actually put this together with supply and demand, this can be quite useful. We have a group for supply and demand also. It's on the main page, um, so you guys can join that. We also have the app available for it. Um, there's going to be live updates on there as well. Now, if you mix these together, they can be quite good. It will help you with your entries and stuff like that. Okay, let's take a look at some other posts. We'll, we'll look at current markets um, in a bit. Well, let's re recap all of these first. Because many people, what they'll do is they'll go through these postings and they might have some questions. And I want, I want to go over all of them first. Okay, so that was gold divergence four hour. It wasn't the best trade. But it did end up going short temporarily. Okay, Aussie dollar, daily, 
Let's take a look at what we have on Aussie Dollar Daily. Okay, here's Aussie Dollar Daily. Okay, what did we have here? 27th of June to 9th of July. Okay, this is what was spotted. Okay, now let's take a look. How many of you guys took this one? Uh, Dave Naveen, can you draw a vertical line where entry would be? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, Hugo Jensen, you took that one. Okay, Sunshine, you took that one as well. Excellent, excellent. G10, what is the entry criteria on divergence? Okay, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go over that, we'll go over that. Let me go through these examples. Let, let's actually do that in this one. Okay. So first things first, that will help you always understand this, is when did the divergence actually occur. Okay, Hugo, you close out for 45 pips for this. Okay, great, great. When does a divergence actually occur? Okay, draw your horizontal line from where you begin. Did the price ever breach this? Okay, let's figure out when the opposite actually took place. Okay, prices never crossed this line. Let's do the same thing, a horizontal line, from where we begin on the indicator. Okay, where you officially see the break happening is here. It's literally on this candle. It's in this area. The moment the next candle opens as red, that's where the selling begins. Well, if that's where people are selling, where are their stops? Above the red candle. Above your recent high, right? Markets go along, take them out, drops. Okay. Now, you can mix this with a various number of things. Now, always, always remember one concept. Okay. With education comes the ability to analyze. Okay. Always remember that. With education comes the ability to analyze. Now, is the market same every single day? Okay, next question. Ask yourself, is a trade the same every single time? Okay, finally, third question. Do you have the same setup every single time? Okay. So what happens is when you learn a trading system, you're, you go through a checklist. I must have A, I must have B, and I must have C. If that's not there, I obviously leave it alone. And what most people have is that A, B, and C, if it doesn't match, I don't trade. But the ability to say that there is no C, but there was a D. Are you able to have the market do something different and tell you that, aha, okay, now in, in this area, do you see a supply level for those of you who trade supply and demand? There is no supply level here. Okay, there is no supply level there. But it's the ability to look past that and say, well, we are creating a slowdown in the market because I know when there's, there's hats or wicks on top this big, it's giving me pressure for a sell side. So it's the ability to analyze based on situation. So education is very important. Okay, does that make sense guys? So the more you learn, the more you'll be able to analyze situations at the moment you need to. It's, it's not building blocks where A plus B plus C is equal to that. No, if, that, if it was that easy, everybody would be doing that. You can create robots for that. You can create automated systems. All right? Okay. So moving forward, let's take a look at uh, the next example. And those of you who guys asked me about entry criteria, I hope that answers your question. Okay, we'll also go through it again on the next example right now. All right, what else do we have? 
Okay, we have Aussie dollar divergence on 14th of July. Is, is that a different one? Okay, it looks like it's really miniature. Aussie dollar daily divergence on 15th of July. Okay, this was just basically moving forward. Uh, Mark Sanders, what you're saying is wait and confirm. Absolutely, absolutely. Don't don't be in a rush to trade. Don't be in a rush to trade. Those who rush tell me only one thing is that they need the money. And if you need the money and you and you trade with that kind of attitude, it's going to be tough. You need to have patience. You need to have patience. Okay. All right, so what do we have on this one? We got Aussie dollar, US dollar. We have this um, lows going lower, but your indicator is going higher. Okay, we don't have a cross here yet, but we got to see. Let's take a look at what actually happened. Daily charts. This is going from 8th of July to 12th of July, approximately. Okay, daily charts, Aussie dollar it was. Okay, where is that? Okay, this is when the drop happened. Okay. So, boom, boom, boom. This is what she had drawn right here. And this is what was actually happening on the indicator. Okay. Let's take a look. Right there, price actually crossed right here first. Okay. If you draw your horizontal line here, no cross there. Okay, once it crossed, everyone is buying here. Don't worry about it. And this particular one, those who are buying, they got it. Leave it alone. Okay. It's best to leave these ones alone. Okay. Now, moving forward. You always have to wait for the, what's the right way to say it? For the uh, majority of the traders to be taken out. Make that a rule of thumb. I don't enter until I see someone get taken out. It's like a learning from someone else's mistake almost. It's kind of cool actually. You don't have to go through it. Okay. Just give me a moment. I don't know why my page is slow. Okay. Okay. Aussie dollar Japanese yen on the 15th. Let's see what we got. Aussie dollar Japanese yen on the 15th. Okay. We have from 20th of June to 12th of July this thing forming. Let's take a look. This is the thing that's coming up, and this is what what Sunshine had seen here. Okay, when is the first time this was visible? Draw your horizontal line, and you guys can see the first time this was visible is here, which means this candle. People will go long the next candle, assuming that there's tails on the bottom, I'm going to go long on this candle. Going long creates a very, very bearish candle, takes them all out, and then it goes long after that. Now, let me, guys, let me ask you a question on this. How would you guys be able to spot this right here for a buy? Uh, Alberto, yes, this is recorded. All the webinars from here on out should be recorded. Okay, how would you be able to spot that this is the area for a buy? You know that people are being taken out. You see that happening. What makes you think that now is the moment to buy? What indication do you get? Okay, support and resistance. All right, that's one way to look at it. We've got a level of support and resistance coming up. Okay. MACD up. Okay. K 
Can we go on to a smaller time frame to take a look at what's going on? Let's move to one time frame lower. We're on the four hour time frame now. And let's squeeze this a little bit. Okay. Crossover on stochastics. Okay. This is what we see. This is what we had drawn on the daily and on the four hours. What do you see on the four hours right before it turns? Take a look at this. Isn't that, is that not an opposite inside of an opposite? Okay. So on your indicator, you see price moving upwards on this four hour time frame. Okay, let's, should we change the color? So let me remove these big lines. You, you, have, you guys get an idea where, what we're doing here now. Okay, we have the lines going up. I'm sorry, let's clean this for you guys. So yes, proper view. Okay, we have the lines going up here and our prices on the other hand, not saying the same thing, it's in a strongly downward motion. When did this actually occur? Well, what do you know? It started doing this stuff long, long time ago. Okay, it started going short and then short and then short because price kept breaking. It's a uh, trend, if you want to draw a horizontal line, it kept breaking. It just kept going short and short and short and short and short. Okay, now it kept going short. All we know is that how long will it go short? Well, it needs to turn sometimes right but on the daily chart you cannot short the first candle that you first observe it okay you first observed it on this red candle you're like i'm not gonna short here there's no way next candle comes along and you're like my four hour has been going short and short and short and it hasn't turned around okay the moment this candle closes your four hour has your information that it's it's dropped, it's consolidated, and it's starting to turn. Take a look at how this red candle opens up the next day, or in the next candle. Okay. So, the markets you get to see all the stuff unfold in front of your hands and in front of your eyes. The, the problem is that most people, when they, when they look at all this information, is they look, they put their entire focus right here. And in that time frame only, they're unable to switch time frame, look at a correlating pair, understand what's the big picture. That's the key to Forex trading is take your view out of what you see visually in front of your eyes and mix and match and see what is actually going on. And it's quite easy. It's, it's not that difficult. People just assume it's difficult, you know, because it's, it seems like there's a lot of work. It's not. It's just more steps. That's all. Okay, let's move on to um, the next one. Okay, everyone uh, get this one, Aussie dollar, Japanese yen. Okay, this was a little bit tougher one to take, but that's okay. Okay, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, daily diversion, same place. Okay, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen correlates very, very well with Aussie dollar, Japanese yen. Now let's take a look at that. Okay, this was the daily charts where Sunshine had spotted this. Okay, how's the image look? Going in from 20th of June to 12th of July, same areas. Okay, 20th June to 12th of July. Markets going lower, prices going higher. Okay, we have our opposite in place. When is the first time we see this actually occur? Right here, when it crosses the first time, which is this candle. Okay, now for those of you who had seen my webinars on this, what does a candle with a wick indicate? With a tail, sorry. Okay, 
when you when you look at a tail this big okay right here what does that tell you yes always just think pressure there's pressure there okay which side is the pressure on this candle up what this is telling you the candle came down as far as here and that's when the buyers kicked in and said out of my face we're going north and they pushed and they pushed back hard how about over here do you think there's any sellers in this candle no you can clearly see the buyers are in control how about here when you look at the next candle look at the tail on the bottom the market came down to here and the buyers kicked in again and said out of my face we're going north this is why the trend resumes the markets go strongly north again okay it it goes north 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 till this point where it then crashes okay but many times you'll start getting indications that the market is at a slowdown okay when you have formations let's see uh, where can I show you a good example where are my candles and wicks this is this is how exhaustion candles pretty much work the ones that we discuss in our other webinars look at this markets are strongly north right and then after that a slowdown a slowdown and then a candle with a big tail on top or a big hat if you want to call it it's telling you that the sellers are putting pressure here this buyer that came in so strongly is now facing these guys that is slowing down the market and then the next candle where the buyers try to push again and the sellers like okay that's it what happened here same story right mark is going long look at the hat on top not so big how about here it's bigger telling you okay there's sellers somewhere here market slows down slows down sellers in control so over here you're basically seeing a candlestick um, tail giving you a little bit of a story saying that we're starting to get some pressure okay what did your Aussie dollar Japanese yen show you at that area also we're starting to get some pressure is it a lot of pressure no this is the reason why the next candle was able to surpass it but we do know that there's pressure so you should start automatically assuming is that this is not gonna the next candle is not gonna go short for 500 pips it's somewhere around here that the buyers are gonna be back in control it should start giving you bells and whistles okay take a look here even if you see areas like this strongly short but what happens afterwards this sort of indication tells you that the buyers are pushing the buyers are pushing okay all right moving forward let's take a look at so we didn't New Zealand dollar Japanese yen uh, let's take a look at what else we got we've got gold on the 15th four hours diversions let's take a look gold 15th four hours oh sorry okay price is going down indicators going up this is on 15th of July okay gold played tricks okay okay that's okay let's take a look at this what do we have in terms of prices Okay, as of right now, it looks flat. And indicator short. Okay, telling you that there is some opposite there, but not too much. Not too much. It's not something that you can rely on. Okay, 
So at moments like these, when you have a little bit of doubt that should I do this or should I not, just leave it alone. Even though that you see that this one worked out, just leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Okay? It needs to come to a point where you, it looks at you and you're like, of course. Okay, you shouldn't be thinking, well, Naveen said that, that if this happens, no, you shouldn't have that kind of questioning in your brain going on. You should be like, oh, of course, I know this. I've seen this before. Boom. Okay, you should have that kind of confidence. And that's the only time you take a trade. Otherwise, no. Okay, when you look to the left, you're saying, okay, let's take a look. There's another one here that you're saying. Okay, Andre, is this the one you're talking about? Okay, yeah. Oh, the one prior to that. Okay, the one prior to that also is pretty good. It's, it was a temporary one, but pretty decent. It's the same one that we discussed on the other pair. I don't know which pair it was, but remember that we said that the gap that it moved up and how the first area was here and it went much, much longer. It looks exactly the same. Okay, the steeper the slopes, higher the odds. Um, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, when you have divergions all or opposite, all you're seeing is price to change direction. It does not mean it's going to change direction and make a home run. It just means you're going to have a change in direction. Okay, isn't there a divergence forming now? Yeah, but how do I know it's divergence now? now if, I, if I do it this way, right? Well, like, yes, of course there is a divergence now, but look at the indicator. It's, it hasn't ended. You need this to close. You need this uh, to cross and go north. That's when we say, okay, we have, we can connect this. But this is still running, so we don't know if we can connect this right now or not. So try to connect only where you have crosses, like from here to here. You see that there's a cross here and there's a cross here. So put your focus on the crosses, not uh, just without it. Um, now let's take a look at some upcoming patterns so that way you guys, before we come into uh, this webinar in a week or two weeks from now, you guys can look at some examples um, so you guys can look at it on your own charts. Uh, Naveen, is there any point in looking for divergences in a range bond market? No, no point, no point at all. Okay, trading divergences right here. At what time frame one should look at divergences? Uh, the higher the time frame, the better. I personally prefer uh, one hour and above. Okay, personal favorites are four hours. Okay, about an hour ago, Sunshine had posted uh, this image here on uh, Euro Yen, four hours that was in play right now. Okay, take a look at this. Okay, when is the first time that you see this happening? It's on the current candle, uh, sorry, it's on the previous candle. Now, do I enter a sell on, on the current candle that is running right now? No. What other information can you tell me by looking at this? What does the previous candle tell me? Okay, we see it's a strong up, but we also see there's there's this wick on top. Okay? Which means there is some pressure, but not much. Okay, because the candle is so strong, the candle is bigger than the wick on top. Which is telling you the buyers still have a little bit more control than the sellers. So, right now, looks like we're in the struggle. Now, let's take a look at this in one time frame lower. See what this is trying to tell us on a one time frame lower. Okay. So, where are we right now on this one time frame lower? Well, if you look at it immediately, boom. And same area here, boom. Okay, this is what we see that's going on right now. So we see this little struggle here now. The markets are struggling here, slowing down and everything. Like, is this the area to sell? Okay. 
Okay, so on your four hours, you're seeing that we don't want to sell on the first candle. That's for sure when we first see it. Okay, we're in the next candle right now where we're assuming that there is still some strength left to go north a little bit more. But uh, if you look at on the one hour, how much is a little bit more? What about this exhaustion up here? Okay. Could it be we're going to go sideways and then drop? It's very possible because we have an exhaustion on top and on bottom indicating a range bound market. Okay. So again, coming back to the original thing is your ability with your education and your experience that you keep adding on by looking at your charts, you're able to understand do I, am I looking for always supply and demand around this? Or am I always looking for a certain type of candle pattern? Or can I adjust to what I see? And then I make my expectations accordingly. Of course, it must meet your expectations. Okay, but your ability to change your expectations when you see something, it, it's good because you're adapting. Okay. It will come and test, and then Ben is talking today at 10 a.m. Okay, so keep an eye on this one. So let's take a look at what else do we have. Um, what currency pairs did you guys want me to look at? We've got five more minutes, probably 10 more minutes here. Let's take a look at some other currency pairs. Should we start with uh, our, the basics, Euro? Are you, you guys want to see you saw Japanese Yen? Okay, we start with Euro, we'll go into you saw Japanese Yen. Okay, what time frame you guys want me to look at? I guess it's not this one. That's going to be four hours. One hour. Okay, do you see any divergence or anything opposite here? Okay, take a look at this. You go from here to here, you have a downward movement. And then from here to here, downward movement, nothing there. Okay. It's limping, right? It's limping. Well, we have nothing there. We have nothing there. So let's move on to US dollar Japanese yen. Or US dollar Japanese yen. Here we go. Yeah. When you have doubt, just don't take it. If you, even if it's a little bit close, just be like, Psh, I don't want to deal with it. You know? All right, now take a look at US dollar Japanese yen. What do we have here? Okay, we look at this trade earlier. Boom, boom. Okay? See how the market's saying the opposite thing with the indicator? Where is the first area this happened? It first started crossing right here, which is right here. Okay, on this candle, you are seeing a slowdown coming up in your cells because the tails. Sorry. Next candle opens up, a little bit more pressure, exhaustion. And the markets go north. Okay, you want to check this with the smaller time frame. Go one time frame below. Okay, what do you see here? Is there anything significant that you can spot? There's nothing on the lower time frame here. Everything is going shorter and shorter and shorter. There's nothing here. Okay. We wanted to take a, oh sorry, we wanted to take a look at the current markets also. So what do we have on the current markets? Markets are going long right now, right? They're going long. Prices are lower, but the indicators is longer. But has the indicator crossed yet? Don't forget that. It hasn't crossed yet. So this can still continue going north, continue to go north, and it can end up becoming like this. So you never know. You need this to cross to give you a confirmation that 
oh, okay, it's going to go down. Okay, and then that's when you see that do I have an opposite or not. Okay, pound dollar, let's take a look. Uh, looking forward for you to coming to Toronto. Yeah, I should be in Toronto before the end of the year. Um, that's the plan. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Okay, what do we see here? Markets are going higher. Okay, well your indicator actually it would be from this area it's still a a, a iffy situation excuse me okay this is where it started here you want to use the area next to it yeah it's still dangerous take a look at this on the one hour see if that tells you anything Okay, looks like this is about to cross. If this is about to cross, you're going to have a divergence right here. Okay, take a look. From here to here. And the same thing from here to here. Okay, if this crosses and it starts to turn, then you're like, okay, I got an opposite. Once it starts to turn, this is what's going to happen to your price. It's going to go, it's going to turn also. Okay, how does your indicator turn? It turns because price turns. Remember, your indicator follows. So, now that you have this exhaustion right now, it's going to go down shortly. It's going to turn a little bit, which is going to make your indicator cross and turn also. Now that's when we need a sudden burst to the north, taking out all the stops and everybody who, who sells, and then we will see the divergence take place. Or the opposite, sorry. Okay, any other pairs real quick before we call it a day? CAD? Okay, let's take a look at CAD. CAD, 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 CAD. There we go. You saw CAD. All right, uh, what do we have on CAD? I don't see anything here on the four uh, one hour. Let's take a look at the four hours. Nothing, nothing worth working with. Okay, Euro, Aussie, Dollar. Oh, this is a trade that we took in Forex Watchers. Okay, all right, Euro, Aussie, Dollar. What do we see here? Okay, do we have a divergence coming on the four hours? No. What about here? Also, nothing here on the upside. Okay, one hour charts on Euro Aussie dollar, nothing there. There's absolutely nothing there. Okay, um, Swiss franc, let's take a look at US dollar Swiss franc real quick. Okay, Swiss franc, we have a double bottom, slightly lower, and indicators going higher. Okay. This you would have to leave alone. Because remember, what is the first area that this thing happened? It's actually where we've connected it. That's the first area. And it's actually gone long already. You have to leave that one alone. It's gone. Okay. Any webinar regarding price action and pro strategy coming up soon? Yes. In fact, I wanted to tell you guys, if any of you guys are interested in an internship, like for example, Sunshine, she's, she's working with us uh, with divergence and stuff like that. If any of you guys are interested, go to for, um, forexinternship.com and apply. We're, we're making Urban Forex more and more and more stronger um, by having these regular webinars and everything. And all the interns who join, I personally take them under my wing and uh, I train them myself um, in certain aspects of trading. Um, this is going to be once a week or once every two weeks we do this uh, private training for the interns so um, yeah again forexinternship.com is for that and for those of you who do not have uh, the apps you guys can get them on the main page of our site just click on home and you'll see the different types of apps that are available as of right now okay don't forget to give us ratings on the app store as well but yeah 
Thank you all for attending. I will see you all next week on uh, the next webinar. Take care, guys. Have a good night.